Hey guys, welcome back to Paradise Lost in Books. I'm Christy, and today we are going to be talking about The Call by Patter O'Gillen. I've been talking about this book a lot lately because I loved it so freaking much. I have not been this excited by a book in a really long time. So spoiler free synopsis, the call is set in Ireland. There's kind of this negative relationship between these mythological creatures called the Shiva and the humans who currently inhabit Ireland. And the Shiva will call a teenager to their land. Once you are called, you disappear from Ireland and you appear in the Greylands and you have one day to escape being hunted by the Shiva which passes as three minutes and four seconds in our world. If you survive, then you are a hero, you are praised. Not in the way like the Hunger Games where you get a lot of stuff, but just you're a hero to the country. But most people don't survive and they end up getting killed or tortured in really horrible, horrible ways. This was a very exciting, fast-paced, suspenseful, tense book, and I really loved reading this book. So if you're not about the spoilers, it's time for you to leave, go pick up this book and read it, and I will spoilery discussion with you when you come back. As always, I will start with the things that I liked. So first of all, I felt like this was a really original idea. We've all seen, you know, dystopias or hunting based stories before, like The Hunger Games, but I felt like this book took a popular idea, the idea of the dystopia, the hunted, the down and out protagonist, and really made it its own thing. The main character, Nessa, has polio, which while yes, that makes her kind of a stereotypical disadvantaged protagonist, it's also a really different disadvantage from anything I've seen before, and I thought it made her a much more interesting character because even though, yes, she did have to rely on her own strength of will, she wasn't like a superhuman in some ways that I usually see the typical down and out protagonist become. She was just a normal girl with an illness who was doing her damnedest to try and survive. But all that just to say that I've never really seen a story told quite like this one. It had some familiar themes, but Patter O'Gillen really made it its own unique story. I also really like that the book is told in third person. It enables the author to tell the story in a way that you get to see multiple calls, but it's not just about the call. He makes it very suspenseful because you never know when you're going to be called. It could literally happen at any moment. I mean, you could just be walking to breakfast and you get called. You could be standing in the shower and you get called. You could literally be doing anything at any time so there's that aspect but the way he writes it just makes you so suspenseful like you know it's coming you know it's coming it's coming really soon and then a character will get called and it's just like oh my god damn it like <laughs> it's a very emotional moment he does a really good job of building the emotion building that feeling of anticipation that of suspense and making you excited to see what happens next and also the spacing is really nice there's a couple of scenes where there's more than one call but it's not just about the call like i said he does a good job of filling in the in-between with details and plot and characters that are still really interesting and keep the story moving. There are a lot of really great themes in this book too, but probably one of my favorites is this idea of anti-imperialism. If you don't know what it means, it's basically this idea that a country invades and enforces its culture upon another one. Think like, you know, England taking over different colonies in Africa back in the Victorian era, even English people coming over to Native America and taking over here. And there's definitely this anti-imperialistic idea that I read from this book. The way that the Shiva explained it, and even the way some of the humans talk about how the Irish got Ireland from the Shiva, it was basically like the Irish came over here and were like, bye, <laughs> see you later, okay, this is our land now, and they just kicked them out. There is a treaty involved, which it never really goes into detail of what the treaty is, but it definitely feels like the Shiva got the short end of the stick, much in the same way that Yes, the English settlers signed treaties with the Native Americans, but they didn't really do what they said they were going to do, and it really kind of ended up screwing over the Native Americans. Besides the great theming, I also really enjoyed how the author grounded the story in Irish mythology. The Shiva are a real part of Irish culture. Um, I looked it up a little bit and did my own research, and 
the Irish really do believe in a type of fairy people called, well, they're called the she, and the reader for the audiobook pronounced it she the, but whatever, it's spelled the same. I think it's really cool that he took this mythology and turned it into this unique, different story. There's definitely some really emotional scenes in this book too, like the scene when Megan takes Squeaky Emma and Aoife, I think is how you say her name, to the rock where the she the girl is imprisoned. That scene was really emotional. Like I was listening to the book on my way to work and first you have Connor attacking them, his whole gang attacking them, which was really intense. And then all of a sudden, like everyone gets fucking called. It's just like, Emma's gone, Anto's gone, Chuck Wu is gone. Like everyone just gets called. And when I was listening to it, it was just like, Oh, oh my god, what is happening? Oh my god, everyone's leaving! Ah! Like, it was so intense and just really emotionally written. Like, poor Aoife, you know, when Squeaky Emma gets called and she's just completely destroyed after that, and then Anto gets disfigured, which actually ends up being kind of useful. It was just a really emotional moment. The author does a really good job of putting the reader in those emotions and just making you feel like you're right there as it's happening. Same goes for the scene when Megan gets called. A whole lot of stuff is revealed around the time Megan is called. And when she's called, it's like, oh fuck, is this really happening right now? It's really sad because we learn a little bit earlier that the Shiva can't really be killed. They just take the dead Shiva and put them in the cauldron and they come back to life. But Megan doesn't know that and she, all she wants to do is kill a few Sheeta and take them down with her and she can't even freaking do that. But at least she manages to save the school by carving the message on her arm. But man, like poor Nessa just falls to pieces after Megan dies and it's just like, Oh, it just makes you want to give up. You're just like, why is this happening? This is too many feels. I can't live like this. Oh, poor Megan. I loved her. I knew her mouth was going to get her one day, but man, for them to, for her mouth to literally get her and be taken away, just it's very gruesome imagery. I really enjoyed the climax of this story too. The whole book, you're just like, when's Nessa gonna get called? When's Nessa gonna get called? Because even though it's third person, Nessa is definitely the main character that we follow. The book opens with her. We see mostly her story progressing. So the whole time you're like, Nessa's coming. We know it's gonna happen, but when the fuck's it gonna happen? And of course, Nessa's comes right at the end. In the climax of the story, when all of the traitor humans have let the Shiva in, and of course she gets fucking called, like in the middle of a fire, and everything goes to shit, and it's just like, okay, that's fine, it's, everything's fine. It's, it's literally like that comic with the dog where everything's on fire, and he's like, this is fine. Nessa's call was really cool. I mean, it was everything I was hoping it would be. I loved how she tried to hide and then discovered it was a monster. And she was like, oh, these handholds are teeth. Fuck. <laughs> and I loved that she recognized that she was a bargaining chip and she used her brain and she was like, nah, bitch, I'm dead either way. So you either give me something or I'm just gonna kill myself. And then you can have fun trying to figure out what to do with the treaty yourself. It was really smart and it was really cool watching her come back and destroy Connor's shit with her new fireproof power. I was not disappointed by her call at all and how she kind of saved the day in her own way. And it was really nice seeing her with her family again at the end, especially because you know that they probably had resigned themselves to the fact like, our daughter is screwed. She's not gonna live. She's not gonna make it through this. There's no way. I mean, for them to get to be reunited with her, I thought that was really great. I don't have very many dislikes, but I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the things that I didn't like. The first was the human traitors, more specifically Connor. He made no sense to me. Maybe I just don't understand it because I've never met a man with such a fragile ego, but he almost seemed like a caricature of like this stereotypical man who can't handle rejection and has to assert his masculinity. It's almost unbelievable because his whole 
fascination with Nessa is obviously he desires her. I mean, he tries to rape her, but she keeps besting him like physically, even though she shouldn't be able to. And mentally, she's able to outsmart him. And every time he tries to attack her or bring her down in some way, she's able to get out of it. And this leads to him during his call making a deal with the Shiva that he will release them from the treaty and, you know, they'll be free to do their own thing if he can have Nessa. And it's just like, you would betray your country, <laughs> you know, risk your own life just to get revenge on this girl? Like, it's a very weak motivation in my opinion, and it was kind of like one weak spot in the plot as a whole for me because I just couldn't believe that any man would really take it to that extreme. I mean, it seemed pretty stupid to me, but what do I know? I've never been a man who was that desperate to assert my masculinity, so maybe I'm just not understanding. And not just Connor, but none of the human traitors really made any sense to me. There was a girl that had the hole in her chest and she wanted to be made whole, no pun intended. Again, there was the one girl who there was no real motivation given. She just decided to turn coat. And I mean, I guess that really happens, but it just seemed very weak motivation for the people who had turned to turn. The Shiva mutilated their friends and possibly families and have been oppressing them and forcing them to go to these survival colleges instead of having normal adolescences and something as minor as like, I have a hole in my chest is apparently gonna make you turn. I just found all of their motivations, not just Connor, but all of the ones who turned to be really weak and flimsy excuses for being a traitor. Another thing I didn't really understand is how Connor could just cancel the treaty. They said they were going to make him a king, but of what and how? Under what authority? Like, it didn't really make sense to me how they could just be like, Connor's the king and he's going to cancel our treaty. Like, I, I just didn't understand how that would work. And there was never really any satisfactory explanation given. It just didn't make a whole lot of sense. So it kind of made the climax a little bit less exciting when we were in the invasion scene because it just didn't really add up to me. Overall guys, I gave this book a five out of five stars. Even though I had a couple of small minor plot problems with it, those things didn't take away from my enjoyment of the book. I loved the characters. I mean, they were all so distinct and different. Nessa, Anto, Megan, Aoife, Emma, Connor, all of these people were very distinct characters and none of them felt like cookie cutters of other dystopian protagonists and characters that I had seen before. The plot was fast paced and it kept me on the edge of my seat the entire time. There was so much suspense and emotion built into every page of this book and I honestly just cannot recommend this book highly enough. All right guys, that is it for my book talk on The Call by Patter O'Gillen. I hope you enjoyed this and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more book talks and reviews in the future. Until next time, bye!